Hey everybody, today's video is all about stenciling a textured wall. This wall right here is a big blank wall at the top of my stairwell and it needed an update. It is a very textured wall and so I thought I'd put this video together to show you that yes, you can stencil a textured wall, you just need to follow these few tips. So if you wanna learn how to do that, stick around, it's coming right up. Hey there, I'm Sarah. This is Creative Ramblings, where I share simple, inspiring videos. With new videos every week, you are bound to learn something new. I share simple crafts, easy DIYs, lots of seasonal decor, and all kinds of home projects. There's a lot of stuff for your kids on here, too. If that sounds like something that you want to see, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. So let's jump right into today's video. I am going to show you how to stencil a textured wall. There are a few key tips that you need to follow to get these crisp lines. I'm also going to show you how to get this cool look that is like white on white. This wall is painted white and then I used a metallic white paint to go over it and it gives a beautiful effect. The wall looks different from sunrise to sunset and throughout the night. It's a really fun way to dress up a wall in your home. So I'm gonna take you back to before this was done and I am gonna walk you through step by step how to stencil a textured wall. Now I have very textured walls in my home. That doesn't mean I can't do fun things with them. It just takes a few extra steps to make these walls look good. So I'm gonna show you how to paint a textured wall and how to stencil a textured wall. When you're stenciling on walls that have a lot of texture like this, uh, there's just a few steps you need to take to make sure that that paint doesn't bleed and you have crisp, beautiful lines. Now I've done quite a few videos about stenciling before, specifically stenciling st signs and other crafts. If you wanna see those, you can take a look at this playlist. All right, so the first thing I am going to do is take everything off this wall and get it prepped. I am going to paint this using a ultra white paint from Bear. It's a Bear Marquee paint and it is a satin finish. When these walls were originally painted, they were done with a flat paint, and it's really just left a lot of damage on the walls because all the fingerprints and all the touching and the bumping that runs into it just stays on the wall, and it is not a good look for anybody. So we're gonna start by painting this white and letting it dry, and then we'll get into the stencil. Alright, so when you're painting a textured wall, you want to use the right kind of roller. So this is a roller with a medium nap on it. It's actually pretty fuzzy, pretty soft. This is going to help get the paint in between all these grooves on the wall. And like when painting anything, do one or two very light coats and let it dry a little bit in between for the best coverage. You're going to avoid any drips. You also want to get a good brush so you can go along these corners and the edges and the baseboards um, and get a nice crisp line. Um, even this right here, I'm not going to paint around the corner, so I just want to be able to get a nice crisp line along there as well. I really like Bear Marquee paint. This is ultra bright white in a semi-gloss, and I'm going to roll this onto the wall. All right, so our wall is dry and we are ready to stencil. So this is the stencil that I chose. It's a large scale wall stencil and I'm gonna link to it down in the description down below. So it comes on a semi-transparent sheet like this and there's a couple of things you're going to need when putting this on the wall. So the first thing is some spray adhesive. Now I have a couple of videos where I talk about how to take a reusable stencil and make it stick to like a wood sign or a canvas when you're stenciling. So you can find a link in the description to those other videos if you wanna look at that technique. Um, today I'm gonna to show you a really easy and inexpensive technique. This is spray adhesive and it can be permanent or temporary. To make it temporary adhesive, what you do is you spray it on the back of your stencil and you let it dry for a few minutes. 
This is going to let the glue dry, but leave it a little bit tacky. Just enough to get it to stick to the wall so that then you can paint. What using a stencil adhesive or a glue or a spray bond like this does is it creates a really good bond on this stencil so that the paint you use isn't going to seep through the stencil and then bleed out onto your wall, which is not what you want. Then we're gonna need some paint and a brush. And so I am choosing this metallic paint here. This is by Modern Masters. It's a metallic acrylic paint. It's water-based. It's gonna go over this really well. And the color I chose is a pearl white. So it is not going to be a really visible color on this wall. The effect that I'm hoping for is that when you look at it, maybe you can see it from different angles, but not maybe directly straight on. So that's why I'm using this. There isn't much of this. I did get a second container just in case, but when stenciling, you need very, very, very little paint. So this is probably going to cover my full wall here. The other thing you need is a stencil brush. Um, if you have smooth walls and you are stenciling them, you can actually use a paint roller and just roll your paint right over the stencil and not worry about it at all. Because this wall is textured, I worry that rolling would be too much paint and it would, again, bleed through. So I am going to um, get my stencil on the wall and then I will show you how to apply this paint. So typically when you are stenciling a wall, what you wanna do is you wanna find the center of your wall and draw a line down the middle with chalk. Um, what this is going to do is give you a place to center your stencil and then go off to the sides to add more. This is a very small space and I've got this funky little gap over here and I'm not gonna be able to bend the stencil to get in there. So I've measured this out and I'm actually going to start my stencil all the way over here in the corner and then work my way over um, because I know that I, I'm not gonna be able to bend it around in there. So I'm doing this a little bit differently, but uh, I've planned it out ahead of time. That's always key. Plan it out ahead of time, know what you're gonna get uh, and then go for it. So let's get going. Okay, so I've got a little bit of the metallic paint or the pearl white paint on a plate here. I've got my brush and a paper towel and I'm just gonna put it in the paint and then brush it off because you really don't need much at all. And then when you're stenciling, you wanna use kind of a circular motion and go around and get it in all the little gaps there. And so we're gonna do this for this whole stencil. Now what you can do here, before I pull it off completely, is I can just peek underneath here and take a look at what the stencil looks like, kind of gauge whether or not I've used too much paint, not enough paint, and this is actually looking really good. So now I'm gonna pull the whole stencil off and reposition it for our next round. So when pulling the stencil off, start at a corner, We're just gonna pull it off without smearing anything. And I've actually got the exact look that I was going for here. I am so happy with this. Um, just a little bit of paint goes a long way. So, on this stencil, you have what's called registration marks right here. And these registration marks are what is going to line up with the part of the stencil that's already on the wall so that I know where to position it for my next round. Now right now I don't need to add more adhesive because this is still sticking really well, but eventually as I go through this project, I'm probably going to need to add a little bit more adhesive. So just gauge whether or not it's sticking. So my stencil is starting to lose a little bit of stick on the back and 
Every now and then it's a good idea to um, wipe off the back of the stencil in case any paint has um, come up through the edge or when you're overlapping them in case you get any paint on it. So I'm going to take this down to the floor, flip it over face side down, and just wipe it off with a wet paper towel, let it dry, reapply the adhesive, and then I'm going to keep going. So to cover up this light fixture here, what I'm going to do really is just put the stencil over it and it's got a lot of adhesive on the back I just reapplied it and I'm gonna stick it really good to the wall and we're gonna make this work and for this piece of the stencil I'm gonna hold it on with my hands because it doesn't have the best adhesion because of that light switch right there the other option would be to cut around this stencil but I do think I want to use this on another wall in my home so I'm not ready to cut it apart just yet Now the last step is finishing off this edge. And so all I'm gonna do is take the stencil and just hang it off the wall here. Overlap this edge. And then fill in just that little bit. And this requires a little bit of holding on to this as well so that uh, the stencil doesn't slip. Now the wall is done and I'm gonna let it dry. I am actually going to take this stencil outside with a hose and clean it up. It actually cleans up really well with soap and water. Uh, because of its size, if the weather holds up where you are, it's best to just take this outside and do it versus trying to do it in a sink. But clean it up with soap and water, lay it out to dry, and this is ready to go and be used again. Absolutely loving how this wall turned out. I've got this beautiful stencil that has crisp lines and it turned out just beautiful. And then I've got this look with the metallic paint on the white and it changes throughout the day and it's really fun. Like, I love it. Um, and then I took, I had these like three dinky little pictures on here. I took those down and I added a set of four of our most recent family photos and I put those up here. Um, this is a place that I see multiple times a day. I have to walk right past it. So these photos really put a smile on my face. So that is how you stencil a textured wall. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you learned something today. If they, you have questions that I didn't answer in this video, comment down below, let me know. I have a lot of other videos on stenciling. A lot of them uh, pertain to uh, small crafts and signs, but if you wanna see that playlist, it is down in the description. You can go check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.